Do you have an opinion about whether the U.S. will have a recession or not? Put it down below in the comments. How about on the issue of whether bonds will go above the 5% yield? Love to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, do you think it matters whether bonds go above 5% on yields? Or maybe you don't think it matters at all. That would be a thing to comment about. Do you have an opinion on Tesla's numbers in the fourth quarter or 2024? or beyond, let me know down below. Maybe you have something to say about whether Tesla should advertise or not. I'd love to know about that too. Well, I also have some good news for you today. Whatever you think, you're right, okay? Or at least according to some expert who may or may not have degrees or experience or wisdom to back up their status as an expert. If you want me to prove anything about anything, give me a few hours, put it in the comments below, say, Randy, can you do an article that would prove what I'm saying is true? And I promise you, I will find plenty of experts who think exactly the same way you do. Um, and I'll give you all of their citations to, to back up whatever it is that they're saying. I I'll say all that to let you know <clears throat> that's the context that I live in every single day as I prepare these videos. <laughs> whatever I want to prove, I can prove it. So I have to be very, very careful to make sure that I'm keeping myself aligned with my underlying values and also with what I, my own experience, my own knowledge, my own wisdom, my own education um, have given me up until now in terms of being able to make any sense of what's going on. Anyway, this is Randy Kirk. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to use one of those top experts. You'll recognize these folks. And uh, they've got a new letter out. And um, I want to show, going to prove to you that my optimism is not misplaced. These guys are, well, okay, they're not as optimistic as I am, but they are definitely optimistic. So you don't want to miss that. That'll be tomorrow morning, probably around 7.30, 8 o'clock Pacific Daylight Time. And by the way, did you know that it's only two weeks away before it won't be daylight time anymore? Yeah, two weeks to go. All right. So Elon took some target practice the other day, and we now know um, we have some great pics, pictures now of a spray pattern on the side of a Cybertruck. If you haven't seen this yet, you must be living under a rock. Anyway, I, well, I did use it in the thumbnail after all. Anyway, Elon says that none of these um, rounds, these 45 rounds penetrated. Um, and so those who were in the cabin would have been quite safe. This is the kind of PR trick that Elon is so good at and it's lowered the need that Tesla has had for ads. Maybe I could recommend to Elon, take, I don't know, 15 minutes a day of your brain power time and come up with these like daily instead of, instead of like once a month where we break the internet on some kind of a cool thing like this. Could we have one a week or three a week or something like that? I think that would do more than the advertising. And I am in favor of doing the advertising too. In fact, some of these PR tricks could become the basis of the ads because not everybody is going to see the PR. Anyway, Motor Trend did a review of the 2023, whatever that is, Model Y, because we don't have model years. But anyway, they called it the 2023 Model Y, and they found much good, they said, and a few things to be critical about, including the choppy ride. Well, I think choppy is a stretch, but I also think the new Juniper version will solve it, just like it's apparently been solved on the Model 3 Plus. But here was their conclusion. The EV market has exploded, they said. We've tested the Model Y's newer competitors, and many of them have impressed us. Yet all of us who took all of us, that's a all of us who took a turn at the wheel of this Tesla came away with the same basic conclusion. Damn, it's good. <laughs> Having said that, there was this one little bit of stuff in there that gave me a little bit of a pause. This is the quote. Compared to other compact SUVs, whether electric or ICE, the Model Y is tidally sized, easy to maneuver, quiet, reasonably comfortable. It has plenty of range and adequate space in the backseat, trunk, and front. They also mentioned separately that, of course, this charging network is, you know, 10 times better than anybody else. We can't say, this is the part that I'm talking about, we can't say it's leagues better than other newer electric 
SUVs. But we also can't say that any of those EVs are leagues better than the Model Y. Now, why did that give me pause? It gave me pause because I think two years ago, somebody writing in a Model Y would have definitely said this is leagues that this is there's like nothing even close. And these are experts who are driving lots and lots of cars and they're thinking about this all the time. And the group of them, whoever, however many there was, two or five or 17, I don't know, came to the conclusion that it's not leagues ahead. So that doesn't mean that I think that it's going to impact anything long term. I'm just saying that would be a reason for advertising because you need to point out what is leagues ahead. You need to point out what makes Tesla amazing and worth the value and also point out the low costs because he didn't say in here that probably anything that is close to as good as a Model Y is way more expensive. All right, next, Tesla launched a lawsuit against Louisiana automotive dealer groups in the state last year in an attempt to overturn a ban on direct automotive sales not using a dealership. U.S. District Judge Sarah Vance ruled against Tesla in June after the automaker had filed a suit against that group. The, uh, uh, da, 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 da. Okay, Tesla immediately appealed the decision and on Thursday, a de Department of Justice filing. What? This is the Department of Justice in this United States under, under Joe Biden echoed an argument recently made by the automakers saying that Judge Vance had misinterpreted antitrust laws in the case dismissal, according to the report from Reuters. In a friend of the court filing, the Department of Justice mirrored the Tesla filing from last week, arguing that Vance wrongfully required the automaker to show the Louisiana dealer groups intended to suppress competition. Okay, well, there you go. There's one. I think that's, or maybe that's two things that somebody in the Biden administration has done that has been positive in terms of Tesla or anything Elon Musk. All right, Trueflation bumped up a little bit to 2.36. Gasoline, according to another headline, is headed down and probably going down more. Food and beverages seem to be the category that is bumping up and keeping us from going all the way down into the under two. Not clear why, I will keep my eyes peeled for some kind of reason why food and beverage is still sticky. This from the Wall Street Journal. This past Thursday, the National Association of Realtors, National Association of Realtors said, this is so important, so important, 3.96 million, I'm sorry, said that 3.96 million previously owned or existing homes were sold in September at a seasonally adjusted annual rate. That was down from 4.68 million a year earlier and even lower than the levels plumbed right after the pandemic hit. In fact, I think that that was an historic low. It is a symptom of the rapid rise in mortgage rates and in addition to make in that are making it harder though for people who want to sell to sell. They can't sell out of the low interest rates that they're paying on their current mortgages. All right. So the report showed that there were just one listen to this. There was only 1.13 million homes on the market last month, which is the lowest for a September on record. Okay? This is what we've been talking about all along. Well, from Fortune, we go on in this same story. Zillow economists predict this week that home prices would rise 2.1 between now and a year from now. That compares to their prediction only a month ago that houses would rise 4.9 between August and next August. Zillow's forecast of the nation's typical home value was revised downward this month due to an uncharacteristic month-over-month -month dip in September and mortgage rates climbing ever higher, they wrote this week. Zillow economists have come to terms with the likelihood that a resilient labor market will mean a longer-than-expected period of elevated interest rates. With the firming of rates, the housing market has lost steam. Elevated mortgage rates are weighing on new listings that are rate-locked. People that already have this low interest rate they don't want to give them up, and they, if they're going to sell and they need to buy something else, they're going to get a huge bump in their interest rate. Well, from Barron's, this is a off the real estate story. By the way, if you're thinking about buying a house in the next six months, eight months, 10 months, even if you're waiting for mortgage rates to come down, give my friend Bill Raymond a call. Uh, his information is down below. He's the best. There's nobody better. 
maybe you're not going to do it. Your friend is, your kids are, whatever. Bill's going to help him get it done, okay? All right, this is from Barron's. At least some explanation for the economy's resili resilience lies with the wealth of American households, which the Fed reported this past week had increased by some 43 trillion since the start of 2020, or roughly 30% in just three and a half years. Never before has the U.S. created so much wealth in a short period, and what makes the increase even more difficult to believe is that it occurred during the worst healthcare crisis in 100 years and the sharpest plunge in economic activity on record, writes Joseph Carson, former chief economist at Alliance Bernstein. This wealth inflation, which can be traced to the most ma massive aggregate fiscal and monetary stimulus ever seen, could reverse as policies are tightened, Carson adds. But for now, this wealth concentrated in the hands of the well-to-do. We know this, concentrating, the wealth is concentrated always, and it always will be, even in communist countries. And I don't care where it is, it's always going to be in the hands of the well-to-do, has defied Fed tightening. Indeed, the wealthiest cohort probably have reaped a windfall from 5% returns on T-bills and money markets from their liquid balances that they used that used to earn them nothing. You know, for the last eight, nine, 10 years, you get nothing on T-bills and nothing on money market certificate. So all of a sudden you can lock in 5%, you're doing it. From the Kobiesi letter, which I've, I told you guys a while back, maybe you should follow this guy and maybe you should. He does put up a lot of good stats. His analysis, will, I'm a little shaky on his analysis, but here is his stats for today, which I thought were extremely interesting in light of this whole bond story. China continues to dump U.S. treasuries by the amounts of tens of billions per month. In August, China unloaded 16.4 billion of U.S. treasuries. I am looking for another analyst, just one other analyst, not this guy, but somebody else that's I've got one analyst so far besides me who is taking into consideration the fact that the Fed is selling bonds like crazy. That's called quantitative tightening. The Japanese are selling U.S. bonds like crazy, and the Chinese are selling bonds like crazy. The three of those things together, you might think would have already sent bonds up above 5%, but no. So what's going to happen if the Japanese and or the Chinese and or the Fed Stop selling so many bonds. Uh-huh. Yeah. Another reason to doubt whether this 5% number that we're looking at is a uh, going to be something that changes over time, down or up. I continue to believe it's going down with inflation. Did see another story today on the same subject matter, uh, talking about the fact that, uh, that right now uh, it's a little bit higher, of course, than it should be given what the inflation appears to be. All right. Uh, the other day we had this earnings report. I've reported on the report. I've reported on the report. I've reported on the report. But you know what? There's so much. There was so much in there. Like I say, I've never. I don't think I've ever seen an earnings call and report that had more content in it that was valuable for investors. So let's. I'm gonna. I have. I know. It's 19 positives. I'm sorry. 19. It's gonna take a minute. Could you hang in there for a second? I think there's a couple of things you'll care about. Number one. You've heard some of these, the first four or five you've heard me say before, I'll go through them quickly. They reconfirmed 2023 unit guidance to 1.8 million. That was huge. Number two, they reconfirmed long-term term 50% year over year, CAGR long-term guidance. Number three, they had a huge beat on margins for any the energy division. Energy is now our highest margin business and likely to continue to be, said Elon Musk. Huge, huge, huge news. Phase two of Lathrop is ramping now. We expected it to ramp now. Uh, it is ramping now. That's huge. So right now we have a run rate of about $2 billion per year in profit alone just from energy. And it's going to double next year at least. That's going to be at least $4 billion next year. $4 billion at uh, 60 PE. I don't know. That's $240. I mean, yeah, what? I'm sorry. Is that right? $4 billion at 60. Yeah, it's $240 in, in uh, PE all by itself. All right, number uh, three, phase two of Lathrop is ramping. Now we said that. Number five, Cybertruck launch was announced. We were hoping for that. We got that. These are all huge. 
Number six, new third-party leasing company is helping with the leases now, and we've got these amazing deals on leases. Number seven, Gigamex is still key to generation three. Don't, no matter what you hear anywhere else, you heard from Elon, they're going forward with Gigamex. It's just a matter of which month. My bet is no later than March 1, we'll see, we'll see the shovels go in. All right, uh, okay, number eight, 4680 line two is ramping with the Cybertruck battery. That was the first information on that. That, that was brand new news. Did anybody pay attention to that? Nobody's paying attention to that, except on this channel. You're not going to see it anywhere else. We've talked about it in three different shows over the last four days. It's huge that we now know that the second line is ramping. And what else did we find out? Oh, we also found find out that all four 4680 lines will be making batteries by April. And that probably by the end of the year, maybe all four of those will be ramped 100%. We might be doing 100 gigawatt hours by the end of 2024. That's not a guarantee. And they didn't say that, but that is kind of the trend and the way it's looking. And then number 10, four additional lines are already being built. This was, <laughs> go, go ahead, find me an article. Find me someplace where there's an article about these three things. Four additional 4680 lines are being built and will be in production by the end of 2024. By the end of 2024, they're gonna start on the next 100 gigawatt hours. They didn't say anything about Reno's five lines. They didn't say anything about Berlin's one line or you know 500 gigawatts and 100 gigawatts. But um, you got to believe that if all of this is happening, it's going to be possible to get those guys going too. All right, number 11, $26 billion in the bank. I don't think anybody was figuring that number. Free, number 12, free cash flow, even with the lower earnings and a huge amount of CapEx. Much the largest, I think, I think record CapEx for one quarter. Number 13, he said to expect future earnings to pay for all CapEx needs. <laughs> Fine, go ahead, find me somebody else that's reporting this. I wanna see the headline. Send me the link down below that, that anybody, anybody pointed out that they said in the call, our projection is future earnings will pay for all CapEx needs, meaning they're not gonna have to borrow and they're not gonna have to go back I saw somebody saying, oh, they'll probably have to go back to the, uh, you know, sell more stock or something because of the huge CapEx needs they're going to have. No, he said, future earnings will pay for all CapEx needs. Number 14, doubled the compute power quarter over quarter. I think I, think I saw that reported one other place. Doubled the compute power quarter over quarter. Now, we know that was the plan, but, you know, there's plans and then there's execution. So this is the execution we're looking for. This makes them an AI company. This makes this is more evidence that the direction is AI. And Elon mentioned that they're going to be putting tons of their investment. That's number 16. I'll, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> number 15 is services are growing and the profit margins are growing, even again with the large CapEx. So your uh, charging stations are growing, which take a huge amount of CapEx. Your insurance companies, that doesn't take a lot of CapEx, but the insurance business is growing. Um, across the board, all the services are growing and they're making more money every single quarter. Um, number 16, uh, huge investments going into AI and Optimus. Number, and of course, FSD, all those three together. Number 17, cost cuts without cutting quality are continuing and some benefits of the ramps are coming soon. So we haven't seen the real benefits of the ramps. Now, offsetting that is the Cybertruck is going to be a drag on profit margins next year. So we have to take that into consideration as we're looking at the numbers next year. Number 18, cost cuts have followed almost exactly the selling price curve. Continued cost cutting will allow for margin increase or more price decreases as the market allows. And number 19, not a single mention of the massive IRA money that will be coming due, coming in as a result of the 4680 next year. If we do, if we have a run rate of 100 gigawatt hours by the end of next year, the income from that will be $4.5 billion equal to the income from a fully ramped Lathrop. Okay, <laughs> I'm just saying. Anybody talking about that? Go ahead. Find the headline. Okay, I'm done with that list. Oh, I'm sorry. Then there was neutral. If it seemed like 
everything else slowed down in 2023, that was true for auto. If it seemed like the company kind of, uh, kind of, okay, we're not going to push quite as hard. We're not going to, well, it was true for auto in terms of the Model Y, in terms of the ramps, but it wasn't, it didn't, no, no slowdown for energy or for services or for AI. All right, what were the negatives? It was four. Number one, they missed on revenue due to low average selling price. They missed on margins due to downtime and lower production. Three, they missed on profits due to margins and high CapEx, or as somebody pointed out the other day, it's only half of CapEx, roughly half of the amount that they showed in CapEx that was going into R&D, which is an expense for the purposes of the p &L. It was over a billion dollars. It was $1.1 billion just for R&D. And number four, overall slowdown of production potential due to economy and the interest rates. All right. Well, the UAW appears to be on the verge of settling. Reports say that the difference is now down to between 23% increase offered by the three legacy automakers, all three agreeing on 23%, and 25% as the minimum wanted by the union. So they're down to this 2%. There's another 5% on top of that that's going to be going into benefits. Um, and uh, that seems uh, like most of that has all worked out right now. So they're really down to fighting about this thing. So we might see the UAW uh, you know, come to terms next week. Uh, good for the country, good for the United Auto Workers, not so good for the big three. We'll see what happens uh, as a result of all of this. Um, many of you probably missed this morning's video because it didn't get a lot of views, but it should. Um, maybe I didn't do the right thumbnail. I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe the title wasn't terribly exciting. I don't know what I did, but anyway, the content was huge. I really recommend you go back and check it out. Here's the card. I talked about the six misleading new myths that the mainstream media is concocting out of the earnings call that just ain't so. So anyway, I'd suggest go back and take a look at that. As noted above, tomorrow's tomorrow morning show is going to look at the one expert's view or one group experts view on the Tesla's on Tesla's short, their medium, and their long-term numbers with a ton of color to back their numbers up. And then tomorrow night, we've got the regular Sunday night show where we talk about what's happening in the week ahead coming up. And what do you think part of that is? Oh yeah, PCE numbers. Nobody will be caring about that next week. <laughs> that, that won't be on anybody's mind all week long. Okay, more folks are getting it. This, they buy one bottle opener, just one, they buy one for themselves and they get it. And then they come back and they buy two or they buy five or they buy 10 because it's so cool. And they're going, man, this will make a great Christmas gift. So I'm saying to you, buy yourself one of these, check it out um, and see if it shouldn't be on your Christmas list or on some other list or giving it out to the folks at work or whatever. It is so much fun. There's nothing, nobody is going to be giving anything else close to like this for Christmas. You will be a unique uh, gift giver this year if you decide to do this. Uh, so I've also got my deal going right now. I, I told you I figured out the freight and I can do three for 65 bucks. So that's a heck of a deal. There's 10 for 210 and 20. I got a new price, 20 for $400. That means you can get it all the way down to two, 20 bucks a piece if you want to buy 20 of them. All right. So if you're outside the United States, no matter which level you're just buying it. I do need an extra $20 to help me with the freight. All right. Um, I think that's all I've got right now. So <laughs> it has been great talking to you.